Good afternoon. I am Doug Schaefer, Executive Vice President of Mac Architecture. I was the principal in charge for Dana Hall. And sitting with me today is Mike McCormick from the campus. Mike? So I'm Michael McCormick. I'm the Executive Director of Facilities at, at uh, SUNY CAN. Uh, welcome, everybody. A um, little bit of history about Dana Hall. Uh, Dana Hall uh, was built in 1967. It was one of the original uh, buildings built at SUNY Canton. Uh, the campus was built in the mid to late 60s. Uh, Dana Hall is a wood uh, blue land structure with a concrete foundation system. At the time, Dana Hall was one of three uh, wood blue land structures built on our campus, uh, including uh, Cheney Dining Hall in our Kingston Theater building. Unfortunately, our Kingston Theater building uh, was lost to a fire in July 1997. Dana Hall was dedicated to Evan and Dana, class of 1931. Uh, historically, Dana Hall was the campus's only athletic facility. So Dana Hall included uh, our gymnasium, included the swimming pool, included locker rooms for our athletes. Uh, it was home to the um, athletic department. Their office suite was also home to uh, our health center um, in, in, in its infancy. Uh, over time, uh, the Davis Health Center had relocated to another building on campus. Uh, that space was then utilized by our university police. Um, another change that was made over time at Dana Hall was their swimming pool was capped. The swimming pool. <laughs> Uh, was capped in around 1997 uh, and turned into a fitness center, which was uh, more utilized than, than the pool uh, was getting used or had been used. Um, in May of 2007, uh, the campus was actually preparing for a, um, a concert, uh, end of the semester concert, uh, and also preparing for graduation uh, that May. And um, our electrical staff was up on a lift and noticed uh, the wood blue land uh, structure was cracking. Uh, at that time, we you know, closed the building. We did not hold the concert that week. And uh, between 2007 and up until 2011, uh, SUNY Canton graduated, held commencement uh, under a tent. Um, the gymnasium was our only facility in which uh, we were able to hold commencement, and we did so up until that time. Um, as far as community use, community also used our gymnasium. So Ken Central School used our gymnasium historically to hold their graduations. Uh, community also used the swimming pool and then thereafter used the fitness center that was built. And other activities? in the gym other than varsity sports? So other activities included uh, intramural sports, uh, camps, day camps for, for kids during the summer months, um, things of that nature. Um, the, our student, uh, our SGA, Student Government Alliance programs would hold concerts and hold you know different events during the courses of the year. Uh, so essentially when you know, when we found we had a structural problem in, in May 2007, you know, we lost, um, you know, we lost the space to be able to, to um, hold those activities. So, as you can tell, Dana Hall played a significant role in the life of not only the students on campus, at large in Canton, and it served that purpose for pretty much 50 years. As issues with Dana Hall came to light and in the structural system, the campus planned and got approval to build a new convocation athletic and recreation center, commonly known as Roos House, right? Yes. Commonly known as Roos House, which houses all of the varsity athletics. But what that did do is that it left Dana Hall without a purpose, without a function. It is no, it was on the verge of being demoed, it was mothballed. So plans were to tear the building down. While the new athletic facility was being built, the campus didn't give up on Dana Hall. Dana Hall represented 40,000 square feet of space that the campus um, 
the campus saw a need for or an opportunity for uh, future for the future for a period of time working with the state university construction fund and also ogs uh, we worked to find a way to uh, temporarily support dana hall structurally support dana hall and, and also determine whether or not there was a future for dana hall we found the services of Western Root Structures uh, located in Oregon. We specialize in, in restoration of wood frame structures. It was through their, it was through their expertise that we were able to structurally save Dana Hall. <clears throat> so Paul Gilman uh, of Western Wood, wood Structures uh, visited the campus and prepared a brief report. And, he was he was very uh, enthused, he was very enthusiastic and he was very um, convinced that Dana Hall could be could be saved. As so, noted, there's been a number of structural issues at Dana Hall. And the reason for that is that as originally constructed, Dana comprised of 18 Gulam arch frames that spanned the width of the building. It was basically comprised of a Tudor arch at either end and supporting a 66 foot long center beam. The connection between the beam and the arches was a moment resisting connection. And that moment resisting connection was the issue of structural concern. And the failure was really the result of the moment connection was not allowing for movement in the wood. So as the wood absorbed moisture and it swelled or it shrank, the steel joints were not accommodating and the stresses were re relayed into the wood, the connection between the beam and the truss and cracks began to emerge. Western Weird Structures approached the project uh, installing shear dowels to restore the shear capacity of the members, adding additional laminations to members over stress and bending, post-tensioning of members over stress and bending, and adding side plates or gusset plates to transfer the reaction of the beam to the art section. So since uh, resolving the structural issues in Dana Hall, it, it gave the campus opportunity to uh, take advantage of square footage that, that we didn't have. Um, we retained the gymnasium that was important to the campus, it was important to our students. So our students you know, relied on that space to support their activities. You know, this, those students that may not participate in uh, collegiate activities uh, who wanted to participate in uh, intramural sports, who wanted to host events, dance, concerts, you know, things of that nature. Um, Dana Gymnasium was utilized for those purposes. The remainder of the building, uh, historically, you know, for a short period of time, was used essentially for storage. Uh, as we worked through our facilities master plans, we found opportunities, we found future opportunity for Dana Hall, which would allow us to not only grow programs, but allow us to create swing space such that we could, uh, such that we could complete further renovations of other buildings on campus. Um, not only did uh, did Dana Hall provide us those opportunities, but Dana Hall was actually used as swing space, swing space in the interim while while the design of what we now see Dana Hall today. Uh, one renovation that comes to mind is the renovation of Cheney Dining Hall. So Cheney Dining Hall, our only uh, dining facility on campus, uh, went under major renovation. Uh, renovation took well over a year. Uh, that we were without a dining facility. We used Dana Hall, the gymnasium Dana Hall, as a temporary uh, dining facility during that period of time. Um, since completing the most recent renovation at Dana Hall, we've relocated University Police into Dana Hall. We've relocated our criminal justice, criminal investigation programs into Dana Hall, which those programs are growing. They're growing into the areas of cybersecurity. Uh, so Dana Hall has been able to provide us with those additional spaces. Uh, Dana Hall supports our police academy and it supports uh, our corrections academy. By, by relocating programs into Dana Hall from other areas of the campus, uh, 
where that it, again opens up opportunities. So criminal justice, criminal investigation recently were relocated from Payson Hall to Dana Hall, uh, which is gonna open up opportunity now for, uh, for future renovations of Payson Hall. Payson Hall, again, an, an original building to the campus built in the, the mid to late sixties, has not seen a major renovation since the day it was built. So as we've been discussing, Dana Hall had reached the end of its useful life and had really been slated for demolition. It had, there was no planned program to go in it. It was no longer serving a purpose on campus, but through the efforts of the campus as well as the construction fund, the building was saved, structural mediations were done, the facilities master plan outlined an approach, and Dana Hall was given new life so Dana Hall was first identified as a possible home for the criminal justice program in Canton's 2011 master plan. They again reinforced this when they updated it in 2018. And even though it was part of both of those plans, the program continues to grow with more advancements in academic offerings and collaborations with other agencies. So that brings us to today, where Dana has become home for the Center of Criminal Justice, Intelligence, and Cybersecurity. They commonly call it the center. The campus has also determined that the university police should occupy a portion of Dana Hall, along with the police academy and the newly added Corrections Academy, thus creating a unique synergy of campus and community programs all within Dana Hall. So the transformation of Dana was planned and completed as a multi-phase project, taking into account requirements of the master plan, such as swing space needs, minimize disruptions to student access to the gymnasium, construction durations, as well as funding. The campus and the construction fund laid out a plan to complete Dana Hall using a three-phase approach. The first phase of Dana Hall's evolution was to address the exterior envelope of the building and to rework the site. Utilizing Architecture Plus as a design consultant for phase one, the campus and the fund developed a project to reclad the building with a metal panel system and replace the roof. Through the process of recladding the exterior walls, additional insulation was added to the system, upgrading the thermal performance of the wall, which was needed, as we all know, the minimal amount of isolation we typically find in buildings of this age. The exterior envelope work also included replacement of all existing windows. And to prepare for Dana's conversion to an academic building, they cut new windows into the exterior wall. The new window openings were typically added at the upper level where the second floor space was to be added. In addition to the exterior envelope, the phase one project also included revising the site to better support the future programs planned for Dana Hall. At the north side of the building, a new parking lot for the University Police was added. The new parking lot provides space for their police cars, personal vehicles, as well as visitors to the department. The work at the south side was more involved as the project addressed the courtyard between Dana Hall and the academic spine. The original entrance was nondescript and really had no identity. With extensive regrading, the second floor entrance was made handicap accessible Additionally, the phase one project created an identifiable entrance to Dana Hall. Use of natural stone at the retaining walls and copper cladding, the entrance contrasts nicely with the metal panels of the reclad building. So with the exterior envelope updated and stabilized, the second phase of the renovations was to gut the interior spaces and prep the building for reconstruction and fit out. This phase of the project included demolition of all interior pool and existing concrete bleacher structures, as well as all utilities and mechanical systems within the building. With available funding, a factor in developing the scope for each phase, it was determined that the infrastructure required to move forward would be included in the second phase of Dana Hall's reservation, re renovations. With all utilities removed, this phase included the installation of new electrical transformer and switchgear, as well as necessary distribution panels. Additionally, new boilers were installed that were sized to accommodate all loads once the building is complete. The boilers were actually brought online and utilized to provide heat to the building for the duration of time 
between phase two and phase four, as well as being used during the phase four renovation work for temporary heat. In applying the mechanical and electrical systems, the design team was able to establish a plan to be compliant with Fund Directive 1B2 through the completion of this project. To minimize the impact on the students' use of the gymnasium during construction, it was determined that we would also upgrade the MEP systems in the gym at this time. The existing air handling units for the gymnasium were replaced, the fire alarm was updated, and prepared to be tied into the new system upon completion of phase four. The primary benefit of this approach was that it allowed students to utilize the gym during the phase four construction period. Separate of our design work for phase two and phase four, the campus and the fund reached back out to Western Wood structures to remediate six structural frames that were never accessible prior to the demolition of the interior partitions. In addition to the remediation methods we spoke about earlier, this process included pumping the trusses full of epoxy to eliminate all voids and bind the laminated structures together. Pre-epoxy can be seen at the top photo and the extent of epoxy on the surface once injected is visible on the photo on the bottom right. As a major goal of the project was to celebrate the wood structures and leave as much exposed as possible, we needed to resolve the situation. The solution was to media blast the wood arches and beams, as well as the original wood deck and exterior wall cladding. This removed the epoxy, any old stains, and age in the wood that allowed for a clean surface, which we sealed with a clear sealant prior to beginning the renovations. With phase two nearly completed, phase four was bid and the project kept moving. The goal of bringing university police as well as the academic spaces required for the criminal justice department, adding a second floor in the existing pool area was always part of the project. So with the pool shell left in the ground and infilled with flowable fill, steel was erected to construct the additional floor plate. This new structure was isolated from the original wood structure and therefore it is a freestanding within Dana Hall. With the new second floor, the campus gained approximately 7,000 square feet of new floor area. At the first floor level, the University Police Department has moved into their new home. From waiting area to dispatch to officer offices, suspect intake and holding, the new department supports the activities required for typical operations. The department was also provided with a conference room that if necessary in an emergency, can become a command center for the University Police Department along with other local agencies. The department is self-contained, but by being in Dana Hall, offers the interaction with students enrolled in the Criminal Justice Department as an added benefit. With the University Police located at the first floor, the Center for Criminal Justice, Intelligence, and Cybersecurity has taken possession of the entire second floor of Dana Hall. Key to establishing the center was to create an entrance and sense of place. With their previous home in Payson Hall, the department was fragmented, fragmented and did not have a true identity. Upon entering Dana Hall, the entrance lobby provides access to the faculty offices, which is at the far end of the lobby, but it also incorporates casual seating areas and formal study lounge. Visibility to all spaces reinforces an openness and provides the students within the department a specific space to work and socialize with each other. The renovation work included adding three classrooms that are dedicated for use by the department. The classrooms are provided with the standard technology platform Canton uses with, within their classrooms, but as you can see, these are really not typical classrooms. A primary goal for the campus, which we wholly agreed to, was to express and celebrate the structure of the building. The reinforced and refinished wood structure is a primary element within these classrooms. The exposed deck allowed for mechanical systems to become part of the design and with 20 foot ceilings, clear story windows provided daylight to the corridor, which also has the exposed structure and mechanical systems. So as part of their education, the students are exposed to and taught investigative procedures. To provide for these classes, the program included a variety of unique environments. A crime scene lab provides a space for the instruction of those procedures, such as practicing fingerprinting, 
as well as other techniques used in the investigation of crimes. Adjacent to the lab are two rooms that allow the faculty to mimic crime scenes. An outer space is provided for the instructor and fellow students to observe their peers learning the investigative process. The inner space, however, is one of the more interesting spaces of the crime scene investigation process. Here they examine such techniques as blood splatter, fingerprints on various objects and surfaces to really understand what it would look like in real, the real world. In addition to these spaces, the students are provided with practice interview rooms where they can hone their interview skills, practicing interviewing of suspects or witnesses to crimes. And the final piece of the puzzle for the department is that we are currently waiting to bid the fit out of additional spaces within Dana Hall that include cyber intelligence and security. Equipped with computer systems, the students will be exposed to drills that simulate cyber attacks and breaches. To support the academic spaces and the students, faculty offices are located and are accessible to the learning environment. With the exposed wood arches in each office and a view looking out at the cart, the faculty has been provided with some of the best offices on campus. Here, we also use the same approach for exposing the wood deck and mechanical systems. Clear story windows allow light to filter into the corridor, similar to how it was used on the classroom side. Offices for adjunct professors and work study students are provided along with common work area for interaction of students and faculty. So as identified in the facilities master plan, the primary purpose of this renovation was really to provide a home for the criminal justice department and to open up space for future needs in Payson Hall. But one feature we need to preserve that was important to existing students, alumni, and even past graduating classes from Canton High School was the gym. This, we are proud to say we were able to accomplish for the campus. A refreshed gym can continue to serve as it has for years, as well as finding new functions to support. An example of that is this summer, the gym is being used by both the Police Academy and Corrections Academy to provide training that supports the time they spend in the classroom. They are in fact actually using Dana's classrooms as well. And the building is one of the few being occupied on Dana's, on Canton's campus this summer. So really for a building that began its life proudly as the campus original athletic facility, Dana had evolved over the years. And even though it still had a useful purpose, it was on its way to demolition due to the structural issues. But it's really through the diligence and determination of many people, um, both at the construction fund and on the campus, that Dana ultimately has been able to support the campus's facility master plan, which really in fact supports the goals and objectives of the campus as a whole. I think this is a building that the Dana family really can be proud of and can play and can continue to play an essential role in the evolution of SUNY Canton in support of its students.